Joe's here, everybody. Oh yeah, God. Joe, what's up, man? This song is so good. How good is that? I have not listened to it that loud in a long time. I remember thinking about this song in particular when it first came out. The video, to me, must have launched a thousand bands. Definitely. Because, because obviously there was this weird little narrative going on, but really it was about the band in the laundry, just mm. playing in a laundry with the doors open on a sunny day somewhere in California while mum's doing the laundry, walking around with a basket of laundry and stuff like that, and dad's doing something or whatever. And they're just playing in a laundry. And I was like, I just want to spend 10 hours a day playing in a laundry. <laughs> yeah. The greatest thing ever. And they're just guys. They're just yeah. like these guys. Just these guys, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Weird guys, though. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. No, no, like in a good way. Like, yeah. I mean, like Rivers is like openly like, oh, yeah, like back then I was crazy. Like totally <laughs> crazy. Like, and then I discovered transcendental meditation, got married, had kids, and now, you know, now I'm running a business. Um, dude, it's great to meet you. Great to meet you, too. So crazy to be here, honestly. I know? must be mad. I mean, you, you know, know, we've we played the song the first time around and we supported it and I was trying to tell the story on the air, but... You know, I never went in and, and did my diligence and followed up and went and listened to the album the way I have, thanks to Nick. And I was like so blown away by that record. Oh, thank you. You put thanks. so much heart and soul and honesty and, and, and just innovation and ideas into that album. It's been sitting there waiting for the world to find it since 2022. And so how does that feel for you to be like, huh, music does work. Like it just has to find its people. Isn't that funny? Yeah, it's kind of crazy that it has worked the way that it has. It's been sort of perfect. Um, and kind of the way that I really intended to, uh, initially to have it. I don't know. I, it's what I hoped, I guess. Put the music out and kind of let it speak for itself and kind of hope that it finds its legs and connects You're cool with, with time. You, you have a good relationship with time. You know, I think... Well, it's not my day job, really. The music uh -huh. stuff has just been this thing that I've been doing as a hobby. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I love to do it. So yeah. I, I really just get the joy of making the music and putting it out on the, you know, That's platforms. kind of the secret. Yeah. The mad thing about it is I think, you know, a lot of people, when you first start making music, you get told all the time, like, you know, it's got to be your everything. And I mm -hmm. think there's some truth to commitment, to committing to the craft when you do it. But there's something beautiful about um, taking the pressure off it, of being a day you job. you got to do it. Yeah, you have to be able to take the pressure off in a lot of ways. Because if you don't allow yourself that creative liberty yeah. of, you know, breaking the eggs, you know, messing up a little bit, then I feel like happy accidents don't happen. You broke a lot of eggs on this record. Many, yeah. Many not included. I, yeah. mean, I, yeah. I, I mean, there's a lot of eggs on runner all over the floor. I mean, that thing yeah, is like such a, a mind-bending opening to a record. Um, it's like when I was listening to it, I was like, man, you couldn't let that one go. You just had to keep adding to it. It's like you couldn't let it it's go. true. I know. I wish that – I thought it would be kind of fun to like have a uh, – um, a, a track list or, or make a, I don't know, maybe like a demo sound cloud of like all the iterations of where that song went just yeah. because it really went this way and then it went back and then we, you know, backtracked and then we read it apart and it was like a real Frankenstein. I think a lot of this record is really Frankenstein together. But throughout there's this, um, there's this beautiful thread that holds it together. I've, I'm really into people who push things out and I love getting lost in music. I love when someone takes me somewhere and I have no idea whether what's up and what's down. It's like I'm in the undertow. Mm. But um, what I love about this is that you just know where the line is to bring it back. And and I don't know how you do that. It must be like painting. I, how do you know when the last strokes the, the when it's done? I mean, a song like Run is crazy, or even you know rolling through a song like like Gloom, which doesn't hang around very long, but yeah. what it does during its time is pretty intense. Yeah, so I think it's just about um, I don't know making a deadline for yourself really and having a deadline and being like well it's done at this date because if i don't know i think we probably could have worked on it for another two or three months but we just kind of were like this is it and it's me and my good friend adam tyne who uh we've collaborated on you know we really deeply collaborated on this last one together and produced it and mixed it together and uh, he was an old buddy and he helped me mix the first one so the, it it was really kind of a uh me and him working virtually actually through the internet um, sh screen sharing and working through I don't Discord. Know how you did that. I don't know how you made this. You know, co COVID. You, you know, headphones. Kind of just going deep into MIDI and. Did you grow a beard? 
I can't grow a beard. Look at me. No. <laughs> I, <can't. laughs> I haven't shaved in six months. This is as good as this gets. Yeah, man. <laughs> well, internally, did you grow a beard? Oh, I had a huge <laughs> internal beard. Yeah, huge. And here we are talking about it two years later. And Crazy. I'm, I, I do, I'm not remotely embarrassed or put off by that fact. We were talking about that, Eddie, as well, that I think 10 years ago, I might have been like, oh, God, you know, I can't believe I missed this the first time around. Like, what is time? Who cares? Like, yeah. sitting there waiting to be heard, it sounds as new today or yesterday or a week ago when I heard it for the first time in full as it did the day you made it in, in my head. Oh, it's so cool. It's cool that you've listened to it. It's kind of hard for me to believe. It's, it's just, I guess it's kind of cool that it's out there. It feels like I really understand now when people say that the music takes a life of its own. Once it's released, I, I kind of understand that now. I mean it when I say it, man. I mean, this is a brilliant and inventive pop record and I hear a comparison game is always tough, but it's fun too. I yeah, mean, definitely. I, I hear things like Scritti Politi in there and the oh, well. cars and just definitely cool things that just feel like the right side of skewed pop music, mm. you know? Yeah. What what did you grow up listening to? Obvious well, question, but the, you know. The cars for sure. That was a big one, especially for this album. It's like, um, I feel like the older, I don't know about you guys, but the older I get, the more I just kind of grow into my dad's music taste yeah, 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 that yeah, he yeah, played yeah. for me that I kind of revolted yeah. from that I come back to. Yeah, it's true. So the cars really were a big one for me in that regard. Bruce Springsteen also is a big one. But this kind of was me trying to bl uh, blur the lines between, you know, taking some of those influences from my past and then kind of see how far we could push them, I guess, working with modern technology and really kind of like working on the computer um, and working in Ableton and like working through MIDI, I you guess. You can get lost in that process. And what's yeah. really cool about this album, as I was trying to say, pull some words out of my ass before, but there's a thread that pulls you back. And you could you could have got totally lost here, because there's so many ideas and sounds and softens going on forever. And I mean, it's like let alone getting into the analog space, you start mucking around with synthesizers. I mean, you could just get it takes years. It does. To figure that out. It's endless too. It's like an endless wormhole that you could get sucked into. So I guess I, another goal that we had is to try to keep things kind of short. I really had a goal to like. There's a few tracks on this song that are really short, mm -hmm. and I just wanted to create something. I don't know that felt kind of modern in that way too maybe something that didn't i come from kind of like a prog rock background where it's sort of long kind of riff based um just uh not meandering but just kind of yeah, searching lengthy music searching exactly yeah yeah it's one of the things i love about progressive music and also yeah. i love about listening to those great jazz records you know those those vinyls i got the other day i've been listening to them you know those represses yeah. and it's mm -hmm. like my god listening to people just search like n there is no arrival in those songs yeah. no one's yeah, actually true. landed anywhere in that moment it's true the whole nine minutes plus is a search mm -hmm. it's i love it yeah and i guess this was sort of like uh the like a reactionary just against that. So I wanted to kind of like create these kind of shorter pop songs that are just sort of like jammed, like absolutely jammed. Each moment, it, there's like a little something going on. Um, yeah. And so, yeah. And vocally really fun as well for you too, because like really fun. Yeah. getting to stretch out across your range and like that vocal on and on, you know, what I would consider to be like a, you know, a quite a, um, a, a thoughtful kind of borderline R&B pop falsetto, falsetto mm -hmm. vocal. And then you've got Gloom, which is just like very... You, yeah, you yeah, know, just kind of more like... Devo or yeah. something inspired. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think um, I also, kind of going back to music that's eclectic, yeah. I also really love performers, vocalists who are really eclectic and using their voice. That's why I like Paul McCartney so much. I feel like, yeah. talk about a guy who can really... David Byrne. Yeah, oh my gosh. David Bowie also, just guys who don't feel the need to, they're not like tied to their sound. Yeah. It felt like throughout their, their careers. They're not afraid of character development. No. And, and I'm an actor too. So it's like right, part right. of my shtick is like, it really helps me to kind of release from the, what should this sound like to what can this kind of sound like? That's a dope observation because I think, you know, we spend a lot of time looking for authenticity. Nothing wrong with that. Probably shouldn't have put it in inverted commas. Authenticity is <laughs> <Yeah>. cool. Authenticity. <laughs> I mean, you're so authentic. <laughs> you know? But, you know, honesty, vulnerability, all those things. But, but you can find those things and you can still give the song a character in order to deliver that. Yeah, I guess, like, what's the point of you? It doesn't have to be you, you know? <laughs> what's the point? That's a point good button to have. Of, yeah, well, I only use it now. I mean, I use it when, like, real gems. Uh, it's, that was needed. What's the yeah. point of you? Fuck. Yeah, I God guess, and, and realizing that doesn't have to be from you. 
is a, was a cool realization, I guess, that it's I It's a great had. name for an emo band back in like the 2000s, too. Yeah. What's up, or what's the point of you? <laughs> 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 what's the point of you? I fucking love it. Um, we talked about um, obviously occupying multiple spaces in a, as a creative human being. Yeah. Um, this is yours mm -hmm. and only yours and your friends. And mm -hmm. you get to make it. You get to control it. And then you go and work in a space which is purely collaborative and you have to let go and you have to let someone else's vision happen. Nailed and, it. And, yes. You know, this is my life. Yeah. 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 yeah so yeah. beautiful you have both outlets because I know a few actors in my life and they love the craft and they're dedicated to it. But the toughest thing is the letting go. It really is. Yeah. It's something that you also don't think about when you're kind of getting into... My, my background is mostly theater based, so that is a little more control. Yeah, a little bit more control there because you're the guy up there at the end of the day, um, and so it's nice to be able to flex that muscle of just you know, the song that people are connecting to now. It's really cool because I wrote this song, and now people have taken the idea that I thought was really personal and sort of specific. And taken it, and now it's because everybody's everybody's got a Chicago, yeah. or if they don't, they're yeah. gonna have a Chicago. Yeah, they're gonna have a place in their life that knows them a little too well. Yeah, and I think what's great about that song is it's like it's it's a tribute to a place that you're desperate to leave behind, but you also love. Yeah. So I talk from it the comfort that it knows you, of course, and you who know, you were there, and who you were there, yeah. right? Like the like the great song yeah. by the Bees, "These Are the Ghosts I Made Myself," mm. you know, and it's like to to me, it's like such a such a perfect encapsulation of that. I'm not, so, people are like, oh, the whole TikTok thing fascinates me, right? Because we've gotten through that phase of people trying to to use it. It's it's by design not supposed to be used by us in that way. Like it's its job is to fool us into thinking we can control it, but it's actually, there's no controlling algorithms. That's the whole point. It's what keeps you in there, right? So we've gotten past that. No one can use it as a marketing tool. So people are like, whoa, you know, how do you know? How do you know? Because you make something great and you make something that speaks to the heart. The same principles apply if people hear it and it makes them feel some kind of way, some kind of real human way. There's no reason why they won't like it, share it, or connect with it. It's so cool. It's I feel so also honored that, uh, and, my, and it's my first experience having something like that. Even though I've gone through this crazy Stranger Things journey that has yeah. taken me yeah. way far away than I thought my life would go. Um, yeah, but you're Steve on there. Yeah. And this is you, this is Joe. This, exactly, exactly. It's cool. Your live performance, man, I saw you at Lala and blew my socks off. Oh man, Dude, that's so it cool. it was insane. I was Thank standing you. just behind this guy. He didn't even recognize me. He's just- You gotta wait for my guy, Joe. He's really great. You gotta love him. Just sunburned to death. But man, hell of a performer. Thanks. It's like, you're lucky enough to go see you live. Hop on like Thanks. as quickly as possible. It's just really an excuse for me to hang out with all my friends, honestly. Yeah, like the band, like, you know, all my, like, Adam is a good buddy of mine. My friend Teddy plays drums, uh, plays in the band Slow Pulp. I don't know if you guys know oh, that yeah. band. Oh, oh. He's amazing. Um, my friend Sam uh, has been like my best friend since we were kids. We grew up playing music together. So this is like a. Th you figured you it know, out. It's Joe. really fun. Trend you figured it and, out. You yeah. figured it out. Yeah. Like we all start where we with, with our first love, and then that can lead into other things. Like I'm yeah. a musician and a producer and a songwriter, and I've done that stuff. But I'm here in this room because life leads you in different places, and yeah. it's cool. You never divorce yourself from what you love. You just find other ways to communicate and be close to it. Right. You figured it out. Like you ended up, you had a, a a taste for the theater, a skill and an ability to be able to embody characters and bring them to life, but you never divorced yourself from your own inner voice, which is incredible because it's tough for people to do both. I think it's amazing. I re what I really like to do is just focus on like a project. I think at the end of the day, so you know, doing a role is like you have this project and there's this goal kind of, and the same thing with working on a song or working on an album or doing it other artistic pursuits. Or, Speaking of which, you know. can I just gas you a little bit, man? I thought your work on um, Fargo was incredible. Oh, man. Bro. Thank you. Like I've never, I was saying on the show yesterday, Thanks, like I've never simultaneously rooted for someone to lose and win at the same time. Then I win. Then I then I did my job. <laughs> then I did my yeah, job. I mean, really, like, like, I mean, you know, you're such a hapless character oh, all yeah. the way through major daddy issues. And oh. it, I mean, significant daddy what issues. A, yeah, he I mean, is serious. just really uh, barking Ve up the wrong tree. He's up the wrong tree. But yeah. then at the end, you know, when it's just all falls apart around him, man, without giving too much away, um, what the f spoiler, it's been out for a minute. 
um, it's, dude, it's it's kind of harrowing watching you just literally reach around in the dark. So I thought you really embodied that character, especially at the end, the way you drew empathy out of me. I did not expect that. In That's, season. Yeah, I, th- I thought that was kind of really the job at the end of the day is that he's a horrible person on paper, but he is also like a victim of his circumstances. He was built horrible. Exactly. And it just is kind of a, you know, commentary on the human condition. Like, would this person be this way if he wasn't in this situation? Was it a heavy set to be on? Because it's a heavy season. It was cold. I'll tell you, it was a very cold set. <laughs> yeah. And I was yeah. just in Calgary for six months. It was honestly great for, for working on music, really, because I was yeah. just alone. Yeah. You know, I had nothing else to do. New except, music, like, right? Because this was work done. Work on music. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I was just like kind of isolated up there. I had a couple friends, but it was great to just sort of, you know, put my head down and focus on kind of like what is the next thing I'd like to do. So, and that's underway? Well underway? We're working. Yeah. It's, it's going well. It's kind of funny that this has popped when it has because... You know, a lot of stuff is already baked. So I feel kind of happy that I've already done a lot of work and I'm I'm not, you know, going to really change too much. It's perfect. Um, has everybody here seen the entire season of Stranger Things? All of them? Every single one of them? Yeah, I'm caught up. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah I, I actually fell off. And, the re- and I've got a good reason why I fell off. This is this is honestly, ask my kids, ask my wife, this is the God's honest truth. It got too scary for me. Yeah, I understand. It got too scary for me. Like, I just was like, this is not a comfortable watch for me. Like, I'm genuinely scared. I'm not scared of it. Oh, wait. So this is a safe place now then, right? Yeah. yeah. The second they went in the upside down, yeah. whatever, the first season, out. Out. Gone. Gone. I was like, nah, dog. So, look. Too scary. I'm scared of E.T. Like, it's a real deal phobia. I'm scared of E.T. You're scared of oh, yes! my God! Oh, my yes! God! Listen, listen. So someone described the show to me. They were like, it's Goonies meets E.T. And I was like, ooh, I don't know. So so I tried. And then when y'all went into the upside down, I was like, nah, I'm out. I'm not not trying to climb over the table for a three-way hug, but E.T. scared me as well. When he's on the table and he's getting operated on? Oh, my God. Horrible. Horrible. I go and see The Quiet Place and I'm the only one not jumping around and freaking out. Like, I'm just watching Eating Popcorn. Like, this is a great movie. Like, it's just like a drama to me. Yeah. But but put me on in front of Stranger Things Ow. and I'm just like, f*** this. It scared yeah. the shit out of yeah. me. Yeah. It just, I feel like also just gets scarier as the oh, show goes on. The last season doubled down. It was just full horror. I have to watch every, you know, critically acclaimed, legendary, iconic show ever created at some point in my life. And that's got to be finished by me. My whole family have seen it up right up to, the, up, to up to date. Um... I've got so much more to talk to you about. We've run out of time. Will you come back sometime? I'll come back anytime. Dude, it's been yeah. great to hang yeah. out with you and meet you. And thank you for coming you back. Thanks and for having me. Listen, yeah. I just want to thank say you. one thing about, about Joe and about this album, Decide, which is streaming now. It came out two years ago. And uh, in my life of talking to thousands and thousands of artists, it's not a given that just because music gets discovered later that an artist is going to feel comfortable. Sometimes it's even with the best of intentions. They get nervous about it. Like, I don't know how I feel about that album anymore. Then, you know, there's not there's no guarantees you're going to back it the way you backed it in 2022. But the fact that you've come out here and recognized that the music has a life of its own and that people are around to hear it in, at any point in their life, you can't put time limits on it when people discover things and you've backed it and you've, you've supported it now two years later, I think it's awesome. I really do. I really do. I think it's amazing. It's been great to hang with you. This is one of my favorites. Finish here. 